Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on the similarity theorem. Now we'll prove that if triangles are equiangular then the two sides are in proportion and therefore the triangles are similar. Let's join Johnny as he explains this in more detail. This theorem states that equiangular triangles have sides in proportion and are therefore similar. Read the theorem carefully for yourself. What is the given information and what do we need to prove? We are given triangles that are equiangular. That means that their corresponding angles are equal. This is all that we are given. The rest is for us to prove we must show that triangles are in proportion. This will mean that they are similar triangles because we already know the corresponding angles are equal. This will make more sense if we look at diagrams. So let's draw what is given. Two equiangular triangles, and we'll call them ABC and DEF. Angle A is equal to angle D. Angle B is equal to angle E. And angle C is equal to angle F. Remember that the triangles are not the same size. Equiangular only means equal angles, but the sides can be different lengths. Now we can write this down as the given part of the proof. What do we want to prove using this diagram? We must show that the triangles are in proportion. One way to do this is to show that the ratio of side AB to side DE is equal to the ratio of side AC to side DF. With many theorems, each theorem makes use of theorems proved before it. We need to use the proportion theorem in order to prove the similarity theorem. To do this, we need to make our two triangles look like the triangles used in the proportion theorem. This calls for a simple construction on the bigger triangle ABC. If we construct a line GH on ABC so that AG is the same length as DE and AH is the same length as DF. Then this would look just like the triangle used in theorem 1. So our proof begins with this construction. Now, what do we need to be able to make use of the theorem about proportional sides? We need to know if GH is parallel to BC. If it is, then the sides of triangle AGH will be proportional to the sides of triangle ABC. If we can get triangle AGH congruent to triangle DEF, then angle G would be equal to angle E, which is also equal to angle B, which means that GH is parallel to BC because corresponding angles are equal. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. Can you find three reasons for a congruency proof between triangle AGH and triangle DEF? Remember, for congruency, you need three corresponding sides equal. Two sides and the angle between them two angles and a side, or lastly, a right angle, the hypotenuse, and another side equal. We are given AG equal to DE, and AH equal to DF. That's two reasons. What can we use for a third reason? That's also easy. Angle A is equal to angle D. Fortunately for us, this is the included angle between the corresponding sides that are equal. Let's write this all down formally. 
here goes in triangle AGH and triangle DEF. AG equals DE because we constructed it like that. The same goes for AH equal to DF. The angles A and D are equal. They were given as equal. That gives us three equal parts in the two triangles, two sides and the angle between the sides. So we can write that triangle AGH is congruent to triangle DEF, side, angle, side. Look at the diagrams again. Why did we want congruent triangles? We wanted to prove that angle G equals angle E, so that we can say that GH is parallel to BC. Let's have a look. G equals E, because the triangles are congruent. But B equals E was given at the beginning. So we know that B equals to G. Have a look at angles B and G on the diagram. Do you see that we can make a F shape using the parallel lines? So these are corresponding angles on GH and BC. So these lines must be parallel. And now we are able to make use of the proportion theorem. A line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. AG divided by AB is equal to AH divided by AC by the proportion theorem. Stop again and look at the diagrams. We cannot keep using G and H because these were points we constructed. They can't be part of the end of the proof. But we made AG equal to DE and AH equal to DF. So we can put these sides into the proportion statement. This takes us back to the original two triangles, ABC and DEF. We have shown that their corresponding sides are in proportion. We started with their corresponding angles equal, and so have proved that they are similar triangles. Let's have a look at the whole theorem again, one line at a time. Given triangles ABC and DEF, with A equal to D, B equal to E, and C equal to F, required to prove that AB divided by DE equals AC divided by DF. Construction is line GH so that AG equals DE and AH is equal to DF. The proof starts with congruency. In triangle AGH and triangle DEF, AG equals DE and AH equals DF by construction. Angle A equals angle D, given. Therefore, the two triangles are congruent. The reason, side, angle, side. Therefore, the remaining angles G and E are equal. But B is also equal to E, and so B equals G. These are corresponding angles. So GH is parallel to BC. Now we can say that the sides of ABC are in proportion because of the proportion theorem. So the ratio of AG to AB equals the ratio of AH to AC. Taking this back to triangle DEF, AG equals DE and AH equals DF. 
So triangle ABC is proportional to triangle DEF. In other words, DE to AB equals DF to AC. And so the triangles are similar. We have proved that the sides are in proportion. And we are given equiangular triangles to start. A good way to practice this theorem is to start with only the diagrams. Work out the given, required to prove, and prove from the diagram. The next time you try it, start with only the theorem statement. Work out what the diagram needs to be, add the construction, and then work out the required to prove and proof from the diagram. This theorem also has a converse. The statement of the converse is, triangles with sides in proportion are similar and therefore equiangular. So if you have two triangles and you know that their sides are in proportion, then you can prove that the triangles are equiangular. In this diagram, we look at two triangles where one is contained in the other. We are given that the sides are in proportion. This should immediately make you think of the proportion theorem. I know the sides are proportional. Then DE is parallel to BC. Very good, Kanya. The sides are proportional. That means DE is parallel to BC. So angle D equals the corresponding angle B. And E also equals the corresponding angle C. Of course, angle A belongs to both triangles. So that means triangle ADE and triangle ABC are equiangular without writing out the proof for the converse theorem formally. We can already see how to prove it. See if you can write down the theorem and work it out on your own. You can check your proof against the one in your textbook. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to look at the task video for this section in the Advanced Euclidean Geometry task video. You'll also be able to learn more about advanced Euclidean geometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.